Okay, today is a technical one for those of you who have been diagnosed with thoracic outlet syndrome. So not just, I think I have, it is a diagnosis you've been given. And if you're working on some exercises, here's some tips and tricks to help you through trying to get it better along that journey. Now, with the thoracic outlet syndrome, it is where the arteries, the nerves or the veins, one, two, all three of those things are coming down underneath that collarbone above the first rib okay so where those two so the first rib and the collarbone are it's the vessels that go through that's where they're getting compromised so what we're trying to work on is things like reducing tension and tightness and increasing mobility around that area to try and reduce those symptoms so the first thing i get people to do for a bit of homework is some scalene release because those scalenes from your neck they go down into your first rib and a bit of stenocleidomastoid. If you can self-release that, which is probably what you're getting in treatment to try and help improve the mobility through that area, that will help a little bit. So with those exercises, this is pretty easy stuff. What you do is you get in, find where your collarbone is, okay? And then you look around and you can feel, when you look around, you can feel those muscles sort of tied up and you notice where they are. Make sure it's not you're pushing on nerves and arteries. So just make sure that you can feel muscle there, which feels like a sort of a non-nervy feeling. All right, you're going to push down, okay, on the attachment point to act like an anchor, all right? So you push down on that point, might be two or three fingers to get down on that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna tilt away and you'll feel that stretch straight away. Okay, so it's like me sort of holding down one part of the tissue and you're moving away, so you're getting a bit of manual release there. So you're holding down, going away, and once you've got that, then you're gonna turn around and look upwards, all right? So if it's my left-hand side, I'm gonna side bend away from it, but then rotate to the same side, all right? So let's go through that again. I'm gonna find that muscle group where it's going down in the back of that collarbone, right, from my neck. Find that muscle group, hold down the anchor and anchor it down, tilt away and then rotate up like that. So I'm getting a manual soft tissue stretch. Now this sort of thing can happen maybe about 10 times. You might do that sort of two or three times a day to try and give you some sort of release work here. You just gotta be careful you're not digging in too hard and you're not going down too deep onto the neural vascular bundle down there that is giving you the problems in the first place, okay? So if you're unsure, check with your physio, make sure you're doing that correctly. But that is a really good one to give you some self-help during the week. The rest is all about stretching and mobility. So the first thing I get doing is people stretching out their pecs. Now the reason for the pecs is your pecs attach to your collarbone. Okay, if that pec is tight, it's gonna pull the collarbone down a little bit and be really sort of congested there. So you've gotta release that off. So, best thing to do with this, and it does help with a bit of neural mobility as well, is work on a chest stretch on the roller. Now I've done one of these before, you've probably seen this before. You can afford to do this one side at a time if you like. If you're too tight through here and you're doing a stretch like this and you're getting pins and needles and numbness, it's too much. So you may find if you just do one side at a time, it's not as bad, okay? Two times like this where you're really opening up can be a little bit too much. You may even find that a roller is too high. When your arms go like this and you try and come down, you can't even get your elbows down because you're just too tight in the front and you're getting symptoms just get off the roller. So if you're one of those people who's really, really tight, you can start by doing a chest stretch like this. So you start from here in a T-shape, get your sort of tummy nice and flat, and what you do is pull your elbows down into, so you look like you've got a W now. Instead of a T, you're like a W, all right? Now, if you notice, the more I go down, my wrist tends to come up, all right? So you gotta try and keep that wrist down as flat as you can get as much stretch through from here right through to the chest. But you're not allowed nervy feeling or any of the symptoms you might be getting from thoracic outlet. So if this, if you start off feeling fine and then you go down to here and you're feeling coldness or heat or you're feeling pins and needles or numbness or aching or pain or any of those symptoms you get with thoracic outlet syndrome, then you need to go back and go back to a spot where you don't feel it, okay? You feel a stretch but you don't feel the symptoms because you don't want to aggravate this by trying to just stretch out your pecs, all right? So that's a really nice one to do. If you find there's nothing with that, like I said, go to the roller. What it's going to do is elevate you so when you are on the ground, you're just back further. So you're getting more stretch 
through the front here. All right? So that's a really nice one to do because it does test how much neural tension you've got with that. Um, it's one I give people all the time. So make sure you stretch your chest out. Now, next thing, what we like pe people doing is mobilizing their T1 too because the first rib is coming off from there, okay? So if you're gonna mobilize, if you think the first rib's got something to do with the fact you've got thoracic outlet syndrome, mobilizing where it hooks on is a really good option because a lot of the time people are getting these problems due to posture. Maybe they are slumped down in this position where they're closing down into here and they're very stiff in there. So if they've got less mobility here, there's gonna be less mobility through the front because the rib is like a bucket handle, okay? So if you can loosen this up, you may be that 10, 5% mobility that helps out the whole syndrome. It's not going to just fix it with one stretch, and maybe just loosening up here does help you a little bit through here. So what you'd work on, get one of these things. This is a body ball. It's like two trigger point balls stuck together. Use that as your fulcrum, and it's pretty much what a physio would do as far as mobilizing in the clinic. Get that on the ground, okay? Go where you're sort of one step below the big bump in your neck. Okay, so you find the big bump in your neck, go one below that, if you can see that, there it is there, and it's on, the balls are on either side of my vertebrae, okay? Then what I can do is just slowly hinge back into that point there till my head touches the ground, then come up. Now notice, I'm not just doing neck movement, right? I'm actually trying to hinge onto the ball, so I'm using a little bit of strength here to come back, touch the floor, and come back again. If you find that's too hard on your neck, give yourself a break, use your hands, okay? As long as putting your arm up there doesn't give you any thoracic feeling, okay? Doesn't give you all that, those symptoms, doesn't give you any of that. Then you go back, hinge back, and you'll feel the pressure of that body ball basically do what a physio does and mobilizes you into a posterior anterior position to loosen up that level. So you go T1, roll up a bit, that'll be your T2, get into there, loosened up, you'll probably find it's quite relieving. Again, not allowed any symptoms, okay? No pain, numbness, pins and needles, not allowed any of that. And you just work on trying to really stretch out the stiff area that's right there, all right? That mobilization is gonna give you a little more freedom of movement around the rib, which may help affect what's going on in here. Number three is about neural mobilization. Now, sometimes with these things, because of the symptoms, you're getting an increase in neural tension. So not that it's gonna affect much what's going on with the causes up in here, but the better movement of neural tissue through that thoracic outlet area is gonna be better for you. So what I'd work on is some nerve flossing glides. Now, there's three types you could use. I'd just go for the median one. So that one is where your palm is facing this way, not this way and not that way, that way. So always like have your palm out like a waiter. You're gonna start in this position. Now some people find they're like, oh, I've got neural tension already. But if you're one of those people where you can do a bit of movement, this is gonna work for you. So what you do, well, what you don't do is that. Okay, you don't go and stretch your nerve out. What you've got to try and do is think of it as dental floss, all right? Think of like, if you can imagine a nerve as like a piece of dental floss. I wanna keep it tight as I move it from left to right. I don't want to stretch it out because I can't, all right? But I don't want it loose as well because it's not going to floss your teeth, all right? So you got to have it tight. So when you do this exercise, you go to the point and you keep your head still until you feel like your arm is then getting tight. When you start feeling tightness through your arm, okay, that's where you sort of stop. And that's your, like your end point, all right? So what you then do is then as you move your head to the left, well, sorry, to the right, I'm looking at the other way. As you move your head, with my head to my right, as I do that, I bring my arm back as I go. And you're trying to keep the tension the same all the way through. Not too much that it's caused pins and needles, no numbness, no pain, no cold stuff. Then as I straighten this arm out, I then bring my head back, okay? So if you imagine if there was a rope where it went through here, through there, through there, and up to there. If I could keep that tight, I'd have to go, over there, but as it tightens up, I have to let my arm pull as I go further, okay? And then as I straighten my elbow, it drags my head that way. So there should be a constant tension on. You're gonna get a bit of fatigue through the muscle. Don't confuse fatigue through your deltoid of holding your arm up in there to the messaging and the pain tightness through here, all right? So just remember, that's got to, your head's gotta move as your arm moves. You can't do that movement. 
like I said, this is technical stuff. It gets a little bit tricky. So you've got to practice and practice and practice and practice. And you may find you're not the perfect sort of thing. You might be so tired, you go, oh, my, oh I can't get my arm in the right position. As long as you're getting some nerve glide movement through there, you're going to help increase the mobility of that neural structure. You might have to do that 20 times, maybe two sets of 10, maybe 30 times, three sets of 10, just to get enough freedom of movement there. Just be careful you don't over fatigue this, be careful you don't start causing symptoms. If you are, maybe you've got too much tension on, maybe you need to sort of back off how much tension you've got, so when you move, you're moving the structures, but it's not really, really tight, okay? Something to play with, something to work on to see if it helps reduce what tension is going through that thoracic outlet area. Okay, so far we've done our stretches for our scalene to try and release that off to get a bit less tension on the first rib. Then we've done some pec work to try and release tension off the collarbone. We've done some thoracic mobs from extension to try and release off what is happening in your thoracic spine around T1, T2 to affect what's going on through the front. And then we've also gone and done some neural gliding. So now you want to focus on maybe some postural stuff. My best bet when you're acute like this is to work on some scapular stability work involving your serratus and some lower trap. And the reason for that is many times people get these sort of things because of their posture, because they are slumped down. Now if, I, if you imagine this shoulder blade is tilted forward, my collarbone is going to come closer down to my first rib. Remember those arteries and veins and nerves are going to come out underneath the collarbone above the first rib in that gap. If I'm slumped down like that because I'm typing away on my keyboard, right, I'm going to close that gap. So you want to be not just, oh, I need to sit up straight and open that up a bit. You need to be able to have the ability to be able to hold that all day. And sometimes it's because your shoulder blade is tilted forward. That could be your psoriasis, that could be your lower trap. If it is, here's what to do about it. I would work on your lower trap by doing a skydive. Easiest thing to do when you are acute, you've got these symptoms, it's not too hard, you don't have to push, pull anything. You're just working on trying to get your shoulder blade back and down by using the muscle back there. So what you do, easy peasy, down your front, one arm behind you, so the affected arm behind you, forward on your hand, you're gonna go and lift the shoulder blade up and back in a direction, my back corner pocket. All right, so you're thinking it's gonna go over this way. So I wanna go up and back that way there, and then raise my arm for a little bit of load for that muscle, and then to add on some external rotation to keep it up there. So I'm trying to work on muscles here to pull my shoulder blade back into a position that's not tilted and slumped forward. And I want to do isometric work with that because I want to be able to can hold that for an extended period of time. So now we're doing talking 10 seconds where you hold it up there, then you release it, drop it down for half the time, let it recover for five seconds, up you go again. So shoulder blade up, tilted, backwards, raise your hand for some load, a little bit of external rotation to keep it there, and just maintain that 10 second holds. Once you've done that, release it down, okay? 10, 15, 20 of those, depending on how much tolerate you can tolerate. That's gonna help you work on muscles to keep that shoulder blade up, to think, keep that collarbone away from your first rib, open you up, get a better posture in there. The other thing you can do is work on serratus because if you're winging or if that shoulder blade's tilted because of lack of strength here, then you have to work on your pressing work. Easy thing to do when you've got neural tension like that, is either do it on the floor or do it on the wall. So if you're doing it on the wall, you do it like this, okay? Arm out straight. Now, bear in mind, those people who've got too much neural tension through here, if you find that gives you tightness and pins and needles, use a fist, okay? Problem solved. But if you don't, work on that. And what I want you to do is have the hand just a little, little bit lower than the shoulder, so not way up here, okay? A little bit lower than the shoulder. And what you work on, keep your body square to the wall. So you imagine like that wall, same as my body, I want to keep my elbow straight, let my body go towards the wall. Shoulder blade goes into retraction to there. Then I push through my hand, push my body away, push my shoddy, shoulder forward into protraction. So let's do that again. Elbow straight, shoulder blade into retraction, body towards the wall. Watch that you don't try and bend this elbow. Once you've got that forward retraction without elevation, so down there, forward retraction, push through the wall, push your shoulder forward, push your body away, don't round your back. Okay, keep your back straight. Scapular press. One arm against the wall, fantastic stuff. Fire that stratus up. So over time, that shoulder blade sits there 
in better position than that. Okay? And if you can't, if you find you don't like that one, do it on the floor, work on this way. Same drill. Imagine I'm looking at the wall, down and back. That one's got more load because it's got gravity, okay, than this one. So if you're a bit weak, you might want to try that one. If you've got a bit of neural tension, try that one. Again, you can actually use your fist and do it that way. So that covers a couple of exercises to work on posture and a bit of shoulder stability to help you get that position a little bit better to relieve perhaps some of that congestion that's going on down through there. So there's sort of six things, self-help things you can do. If you've been diagnosed with that thoracic artery syndrome and you're having problems with it, these are the sort of exercises that we give our clients. Hopefully they can help you too. See you next time.